Okay, this is 9.4 with the title Light, Wave, or Particle? Which is a good question, and the answer is not so simple. Okay, so we're talking about the early theories of light here in the time range of about 1650 to 1710. This is what we're talking about. And this was the time of Isaac Newton and a couple of the other really big famous physicists. Okay, so in 1650 to 1710, there is a debate over light as a particle versus a wave. So this is what's going on in the late 1600s. The wave theory of light, well, it started around 1665 when a guy named Francesco Grimaldi, and you don't need to know that name, this is just for your information, a guy named Francesco Grimaldi claimed that light diffracted light diffracted when it went through a narrow slit when it went through a narrow slit And this means, if that happens, that means that light must be a wave. Now, Grimaldi is also actually the first guy to coin the term diffraction. He was, he was the diffraction expert. But people didn't really believe him. They weren't able to reproduce it. They said that, no, it doesn't actually look like light does refract. Um, so anyway, there, there's a few debates here. Um, now, with this wave theory of light, lots of people did like it. One of those guys was named Huygen, and his principle, Huygen's principle, says that all points on a wave, and this is any wave, all points on a wave front can be thought of as new sources of spherical waves. And so Huygen came up with this principle, the way of thinking of waves, which says that as the front of a wave, as a wave front expands, every point on that is acting like a new source of wave that expands spherically. So um, he had this principle, and he applied it to the wave theory of light as well, and, and he said that this can apply, this can explain a lot of things about how light works, and we're going to look at that just below. But there were some drawbacks here. One of those drawbacks is if we say that light is a wave, usually wave needs to be in some medium. We have a water wave or, or a sound wave, that sort of thing. And so this requires an invisible... ether, or ether, this is what they called it, an invisible ether to travel through. They thought that if light is a wave, well, it can travel through a vacuum. That means that in that vacuum, there still needs to be some invisible ether that it's actually traveling through. And, and this was a bit of a problem because they couldn't prove that there was this ether. Okay, so that was one of the drawbacks. And another one was that um, waves tend to spread out. Um, while light tends to move in straight lines. So those were the two big things that people were saying, well, Maybe, maybe it isn't a wave because these are two problems. And at the same time, there was the particle theory of light. So that was the wave theory, and the particle theory was, we're going to say it was more popular at the time. More popular 
And a big reason for that was that it was led by Isaac Newton. And Newton was getting famous in those days. He was doing his Apple thing. Well, the Apple thing is, is a, not a true story. But anyway, he was doing his gravity. He was doing his forces. He was doing all sorts of cool things. He was all about um, sort of kinematics, dynamics, explaining things uh, in terms of mechanics. And he thought, hey, light is the same thing. It's just a little ball that moves around. It's a particle. And so he was leading this particle theory of light. And so this was more popular. It was also easier to understand. And it didn't require it didn't require this magical ether to travel through. And the last thing is it did a good job of explaining rectilinear propagation. That's where we say that light travels in straight lines not spreading out. So there we go. That, that was sort of the state of the debate at the time. Now, it turns out there is a lot of good stuff going on with this idea that light is a wave. So we're going to look at this. Um, Huygens' principle, principle, this idea of, of the moving wave fronts, explains a lot really well. So the first picture we have here are the wave fronts. And this is what he was saying, that, that if you have this here, this is our wave front. Remember, we, we said that that's the front edge of our wave as it moves forward. Well, we can actually pretend that every single point on there is the source of a new wave. So you can see that, um, and that that's the way this is built up right now, is it's saying that this wave front is sort of produced by adding up a bunch of waves all together here. You can see how these waves are all added together like this all these waves being added together. And as the wave moves forward, it just keeps on propagating that way. So that explains sort of our, our straight propagation. We also have a circular wave front, which does happen. And you can see that, um, say th we're looking at these points, well, each one of those would be the source, it emits this circular wave from it. And you can see that it explains how sort of a circular propagation could be happening as well. So that's the idea of the Huygens principle. And it actually did a great job of explaining some things about light. One of those is refraction. So in refraction here, if we have our wave front, so you see we have our wave front here, and the light starts out all parallel. We've got ray 1, ray 2, ray 3. They're all coming in parallel. But now ray 1 is entering this new medium. And the new medium, it moves slower in the new medium. So it doesn't travel as far as the other ones do. If it doesn't travel as far, well, you see that this one travels further. This one travels, well, the same distance as ray 2. Ray 2 and 3 travel the same distance. Ray 1 has traveled a shorter distance. So you see that actually the wave front had to bend a bit here because ray 1 is now shorter than ray 2. And we have the same thing here. Now ray 2 becomes shorter. And you can see that we have this, this even more bent wave front. And then eventually when ray 3 comes in, you could see that it would, it would be down here and we would, have, we would have our new wave front. So it actually explains why um, materials would bend towards the normal, which is great. In fact, the Newton explanation was completely dead wrong for refraction, and it was one of the, one of the reasons why people realized, well, actually Newton's explanation wasn't good. But that didn't happen for a while. So there you go. It explains refraction with the, this idea of the wave fronts. It also explains reflection. You can see that if we have our waves coming in, and remember we're drawing our waves here, the, these lines can be our crests and the, the white areas can be our troughs. As these waves hit this boundary here, you see we've got this wave front. Well, it hits that boundary. This part gets reflecti re, uh, reflected into a wave that looks like that. And we have these vertical waves that end up coming out as the wave fronts get redirected, and you end up with new wave fronts going in this direction. So that's how it explains reflection. I put a picture of diffraction, because that's the, the four points here that, um, that are important to look at, are 
our wave fronts, refraction, reflection, and diffraction. And we will get into it more later how, uh, I mean, diffraction can only be happening if light was a wave. Diffraction can't happen with a particle. Diffraction is um, where when it goes through a slit, it propagates outwards as a wave. That's not going to happen with a particle. And so Huygens' wave theory of light um, definitely explained diffraction quite well. So there we go. It, it was able to explain all the main aspects. We're going to, on this page, compare the two theories. So we've got Newton and Huygens. Newton is the particle. We'll put that here. This is particle. And Huygens is wave. And what we have here, rectilinear propagation. Remember, this is the idea that the wave moves in a straight line. Well, Newton's argument here was strong. And I'm going to put strong and weak on these. So Newton was strong because particles obviously move in straight lines. So he's saying here that these particles at extremely high speeds move in straight lines. And obviously, they need to be at extremely high speeds so they're not affected much by things like gravity and other things that could be slowing them down or changing directions. And so that's a bit of an issue there, but it, it's still a pretty good explanation. Whereas the wave explanation, people weren't so crazy about because it seems like waves should be spreading out. Um, but really, it, Huygens' principle did still explain it. So we've got Huygens' principle here. Huygens' principle. The wave front propagates forward. And we saw on the previous picture how it could propagate forward in a straight line. Okay. Now, diffraction. Diffraction here, Newton was very weak. Whoops. Newton was... His argument was weak here. He said that... He basically didn't believe the light diffraction. He said the light diffraction that people were claiming they saw, light diffraction, he says, is actually just collisions between light particles. And he claimed that diffraction wasn't actually happening. He was wrong. Whereas, of course, the wave theory, well, that's strong because he is able to say that each point acts as a point source for new spherical wavelets. Okay, so we've got two more um, things to discuss here. Reflection. Newton's argument here was pretty strong for reflection. He said that reflection, when light reflects, that's just a perfectly elastic collision. And that makes a lot of sense. We learned about perfectly elas elastic collisions. So our light particle can just be hurling towards some surface. It bounces back with a new angle, same speed. That makes a lot of sense. Um, but I would say that the... Um, wave argument was strong as well for this because we can see on the previous page that the points we looked at how reflection worked for the wave theory so points on the reflecting surface act as new point sources
and then the wave just continues propagating in a new direction and it it works out pretty well and refraction here well Newton's argument here was pretty weak as well he said that the light particles when they enter a new medium they uh, so he said that um, he said that they the light particles accelerate and bend toward the normal when the particle's speed increases. So when their speed increases. So he said that when it enters a new medium, it's bending towards the normal because they're getting faster and they want to move faster so they bend towards the normal. This is actually completely false. Completely false. It happens the other way. Light actually moves slower. When it moves slower, it bends towards the normal. Newton was saying it happens when it moves faster. So really his explanation here was not very good um, in terms of refraction. Whereas we saw on the previous page the explanation for the wave theory. We saw that the wave front moves at different speeds. different speeds in the different medium, which makes it so bending toward the normal in slower media. Okay, and that's the whole summary. So you can see, um, in general, the wave theory was pretty strong. In general, the Newton's theory had a few weaknesses, um, but Newton's theory ended up being the most uh, favored for quite a while, and it wasn't until somebody finally achieved light diffraction in a very clear way that people realized Newton might have made a mistake. Okay, and we're going to see that in the next lesson. There's a few homework problems at the bottom. Enjoy them.